Hello. Sweet. Thank you. All right, like you said, I'll be talking about hardware APIs. And I said hardware because it sounds cool, but primarily we'll be talking about an Arduino because I have an Arduino right here. But I want to win that Raspberry Pi out there. <laughs> Anyways, before I get started, I want to say one thing. Jameson tweeted this a year ago. Just go ahead and read that. And I made my slides, and then I'm not a designer, and I made my slides. And then I happened to see him tweet this, something about it earlier, and I clicked on it, and it was exactly what my slides were. So sorry about the default blue Helvetica. Um, <laughs> just a little bit about me. Um, my background is more web development, and then actually my first language was JavaScript. And I'm not a designer, like the last guy said, so I don't know. But I started developing websites and freelancing, and then have now started shifting. And I'm a hobbyist for hardware and stuff. And actually, a couple months ago, I attended RobotsConf 2014, and it truly inspired me. Um, Voodoo Tiki God, aka Chris Williams, he does like uh, JSConf, RobotsConf. He spoke and asked each one of us what we're going to take away from RobotsConf. I got pretty excited because he's a pretty influential speaker, and just the way he was talking, it made me like subscribe to Make Magazine. I bought some hardware, but I wasn't even really sure what I was getting myself into. I was, but I, I knew I wanted to make something with hardware because hardware is awesome. Jameson actually talked about awesome things you can do with hardware last year at Mountain West, so that also helped inspire me. So I bought some things, and then what I wanted to make, my project seemed a little crazy, but it was a white tiles app or like the white tiles game, but with hardware. So basically I'd have, the way I thought it was, was like I'd have a grid of LEDs and then four buttons. And basically if you don't know what the white tiles phone app is, it has like these black things that come down and then you tap them in consecutive order. And so I wanted to make that with hardware, like a life-size hardware game that you could play. And then, what was that? Did someone say something? Oh, anyways, I actually did make this. And Jameson can test, and he saw it, and I, I showed him, and so I did write it. And I actually wrote it in Arduino, or it's like a variation of C++ or C, I'm not really sure. But I found it was, at least for me, like there's a story of me, how I came from web development to hardware. Writing in Arduino was like super hard, and I was like, I didn't understand. There's a lot of concepts I didn't understand. I haven't taken any computer science courses, so I'm still like super fresh. And <laughs> I took, and I looked at Johnny Five, and Johnny Five was awesome because it makes you do, do uh, lets you do easy stuff with, like, just looking at this syntax. It like looks like jQuery esque, you know, like board dot on ready, and then you'd give it a button, and then you say new five dot button, and then that'd be on like pin eight, and then you could say like button dot on down, and then you'd press down, and then or button dot on hold. So I was like, wow, that's pretty easy. I was like, I want to see what Arduino would be like, and then. So I was looking at Arduino, and basically they have a setup loop, and then, or I mean, they have a setup and then a loop. And in the setup, you set a pin mode. So this is just for doing a button, just like the um, Johnny Five version I just showed you. And you t it takes a pin and then the mode, and then the mode would be something like an input, output, input, pull up, etc. And then you could, um, the way I'm doing it here is by reading the state of the push button value, so setting it outside. And then if the button is pressed, the button state will be high. Like, and then if it's not pressed, it'll be low. And then this may seem like similar to Johnny Five's, but it actually can get kind of complex. Like, say for instance, I push a button and then let go, it will cons out multiple times. And by multiple times, I mean like it could get called like five to ten times. And I was like so confused why I was pushing a button and then like my game would, I'd push the right button, but then the game would break. I was like so confused, but it was because apparently you have to do something which called like debouncing. And the reason why you have to debounce is, um, for you who don't know what debounce is, it's like, if you've ever used like lodash or underscore, they have a debounce function. And the reason why it was happening is because the values were read faster than your hands would move. So there, uh, there may be like a lot of reads before you even push the button and change the state. So there's a couple ways that I know of that you could fix this, and one way is the way I'm doing it right here, is the keeping the button state outside and then check to just see if the button state has changed, or you can debounce, which is also cool. But I still wanted to know what Johnny Five was doing to make things so much easier so and accessible, so I decided to peek under the covers. <whistles> I 
I don't know why I whistled. It was just kind of, I just decided to. Anyways, I opened up LED.js, and I saw, I immediately recognized the concept of pins, because you have pins in Arduino, and you have, you know, Johnny5 uses them also. And then they had a board, and then they also had some, like, a variable called IO, so they'd always do, like, IO dot something, and, you know, I knew IO stood for, like, input and output, but I was like, how are they, what are they doing with this? And so I kept chasing, tracing back what IO was, and I finally came to a conclusion that uh, the library they're using is called Fermata, like a Fermata library, it's actually called that. Like, there's Fermata, and then there's, like, this Fermata library, not to get confused with that. And so they're using Fermata library, and basically what Fermata is, not the Fermata library, but what Fermata is, it's a protocol to communicate with microcontrollers from software on a computer, that's, like, the definition. And so a microcontroller would be, like, an Arduino, Raspberry Pi, et cetera. And then for you that don't know what a protocol is, it's an agreed upon way. And then so we can control the Arduino by using uh, Fermata, something that, you know, I like to just show a little, you can sprinkle on a little bit of fairy dust, which is called Fermata, which will be able to control, you know, using the, or control the Arduino using Node. So I'll talk a little bit more about Fermata a little bit later. And also I found this thing called, inside the Fermata library, Node Serial Port. And this will allow you to make a connection to a serial port for reading and writing data, communicate over the USB, et cetera. And this node serial port, the library was actually, well, I think it's called library, is actually um, Chris Williams, the guy I was talking about earlier, he made that, so it's awesome. You can do some cool stuff with that. <clears throat> so this is my whole picture. This is what I came to see. I looked at Johnny5, looked inside Johnny5, just simple LED.js um, example, and then I found the Fermata library, which will then go, you, they use node serial port to communicate the data, you know, through um, your computer to the Arduino or whatever. And then it goes on to the Arduino, and then it's processed by the onboard, like, firmware that you, you know, you can boot up ahead of time. And then um, to use node for the Arduino, you, we'll upload a standard Fermata, which is um, a way to communicate through it, like I said. So we have the whole picture, well, this is how me going through my steps of learning about this, and I have the whole picture, I could see through top down, but I wanted to make a Johnny Five style abstraction so that I, I could say, you know, I wanted to be able to do what Johnny Five was doing, but a much simpler version. So I'll show you that demo, and hope everything works. I'm going to mirror my display. Maybe my can anyone see my cursor? Cool. Oh, wrong one. <clears throat> so I have the Arduino right here. It's not really important that you see it, but just pointing it out. Okay, so I'll open my Mountain West folder. Oops. And I've already installed, um, just in case you know, because I don't have internet, I already installed the from. Oh, let me make that bigger. Why don't you guys see anything? Is that better? Bigger? Okay. All right, so I already installed the Fermata library. So now um, we're gonna need a couple things that to make for what we're gonna do. So I'll first make an index.js and a josh.js, you know, because my name. And I'll use Sublime. You guys can hate on me later because I'm not using Vim or whatever. <laughs> okay, so now we'll open up our josh.js, and we'll create a function called LED. And inside here, we'll have the, we'll give it a pin, and then the board that the Fermata library will give us when in our index.js. I'll say this.pin is equal to pin, this.board is equal to board. Oops, I'll put that back there. And then we'll have, uh, in the Fermata library, that you can um, turn on, give the pin mode like I was showing you earlier that Johnny Five was doing, but we'll just use the Fermata library in here, and then we'll say pin mode, <clears throat> I think it's capital M, maybe not, I'm not sure. I think it's like that. And then we can say, give it this, the pin that we're giving it in the LED function, then we'll say this is upboard, dot modes, dot output. And they'll also do LED, Oh, thank you. Thanks, Murphy. Prototype. 
Oh, you do. And we'll say, instead of dot on, let's say give life, because let's give the LED life. Thanks, Murphy, for laughing again. <laughs> so we'll console log her on, and then we'll say, we'll just find out what pin we're on. There's that pin. And then we'll say this.board.digital write, which digital write is um, a function that the Fermata library gives that you can write an output to the digital pin. So either um, high or low. So high will be on, and then low will just be off. So we'll give it that. And we'll have to give it the this up pin, and then this dot board dot high. And then in our index.js, we'll have, oops, we got to export it. LED, LED. And then our index.js will say var formata equals the required of the formata library that I've already installed. And then we could say var josh is equal to require josh. And then um, we can give it the board instance, like I was saying, so new formata. This formata library has the board. This is familiar to anyone who used uh, Johnny5 or formata. They're both, you can give it either board instances, but I'm just using formata. And then we give it the path of the USB. So if when you, ahead of time, you can check to see which serial port you, you'll be using. So I know I'm using this one right here. And I'm using Arduino Uno, et cetera. Also, I'm going to want to upload um, standard formata to the Arduino so we can communicate to it, as I was saying earlier. So I'll upload that right now. Flash, because it works. So I know the port to USB is ttty.usb modem um, 1411. Inside here, oops. Yeah, it's not showing me. Here. And then inside this, we can just say var LED equals new josh dot LED. And then we can give it the pin, which I'm on pin 13, just because it's easy. And then we give it the board instance from right here, so we can communicate it in here. And then we can just say led.give life. And then in theory, if we run node index.js. Woo! Give life! Yes! There we go. We're in business. All right. Now we're talking. OK. Back to some slides. That's just going to stay on. Can any of you like, see the light? Yeah. Nice. All right, good. All right, next slide. Level two, because I'm a gamer, so level two. Now we're talking about the board. And for me as a web developer, this was like extremely complex. When I opened up the Fermata library, I was like, you got to be kidding me. I saw like bit shifting, bit masking. I was like, oh my gosh, I just got overwhelmed. and. Took me a couple days to cool off, you know. I was a little scared. But I decided to try and make a simple example. These are all some simple examples. Anyways, I'll be using a serial port. And just before I use that, I just want to cover a couple uh, definitions. One being baud rate. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. And so basically, when we're going to open in a serial port, we need to specify a couple things. The path of the serial port, which you already saw, and then we can give it some options. I need some water, excuse me. Oh, much better. All right. <laughs> the option object allows us to pass some stuff. One of the things is the baud rate. And baud rate specifies how fast the data is sent over the serial line. So usually it'll be bits per second or BPS. And baud rates can be uh, basically like any value. The only requirement, though, is that both devices operate the same rate. So this is on say 9600, and this one's on 9600, the Arduino and um, what we're communicating with, so node. And then the most common baud rate is 9600 BPS, which is why I said that. And then also, the higher baud rate goes, the faster the data is sent, received. But there are some limits to how fast you can send data, of course, and transferred. And then there's also a ton of other valid attributes that in the, for the options object that 
by the way, the options object is the node serial port. That's what I was talking about. I hope I explained that. You can, I'll show you that. But anyways, there's like data bits, stop bits, um, like parity, buffer size, there's tons. But we'll only be using baud rate just so we can communicate with it. And we'll have another demo. Sweet. Love demos. Well, we all love demos, don't we? Oh my gosh. Okay, there it is. Sometimes it's a little hard to find my cursor. Sweet. So now we'll go back to demo two. And I've already installed Node Serial Port, you know, like always, and then like I did in the last demo, I did in all of them. And we'll need an index.js. And then we'll also need, I have some notes just in case I forget. Oh yeah. And then we'll have uh, formata.js, because we're making the formata board. Okay, open this in Sublime. Where did it get hit? Let's see how big that is. Is that fine? Okay. So now I'll open up formato.js. And inside here, we're going to need to get the serial ports that required in. Require. And then we're going to get call the serial port, not capitals. That's stupid. And then we're going to get serial port. That's just localizing the object constrict constrictor. So now we'll say Josh's board again. And then we'll say port, we'll get the port, and then we'll have the callback. And then inside here, we'll say var board is equal to this. And then we'll, I'm just going to call the callback just so we can get the console log in the other one, but I don't need to do something different. So now we can say this, so board dot, we'll just do sp for serial report. And then we'll start, we'll create a new uh, serial report. And then we'll give it the port from up here. And then we'll do a callback. So, or, oops, not callback. And then in here, we give it the baud rate, which is what I was talking about earlier. And then the most common one is just 9600, which I'll be sh um, doing on the Arduino as well. So now we could say console log inside here. And you could say, you got it, coach. Starting up. Then we can say this dot on open. So when serial port opens, by the way, I'm using again the serial port library. So when we open it, open say function and console log port is open. And I'll start with that for now, but it'll get better. And then we'll give it the Formata instead of having the Formata library requiring ours. And then we'll create a new board. I'll say Formata dot Josh's board. And then we'll do the path to the USB, or the path to USB, yeah, so the Arduino, which was TTY dot, I can never remember, dot USB modem 1411, dot USB modem. 14.11. Shoot, I just forgot. That's embarrassing. Oh, okay. Thanks. Don't hate me. Okay, and then um, inside here, we'll again call back. And then all we'll say is connected for now. So we have the model.js file, and then we have the index.js file. But now we also need to have an Arduino sketch because. So now we're opening a serial port, but I want to be able to communicate. So in here, we'll create a new, so right here. And all of them have a void setup and void loop. And then we'll just say serial.begin listening to 9600, the baud rate, the speed that it's going to, like I explained earlier. And we'll have the loop. And we'll say serial.write one delay. And then in here, let's we'll also write a zero. And what we should be getting, what the heck? Oh, uh, I put Bing. Thanks. Thank you.
What's wrong with this one? Can you guys? Oh my gosh. Thank you very much. The crowd saves my day, or saves me. All right, so I upload this, and now I should be writing, wow, why is it? You need to speak up if it's so small. I don't even know how to, you can't do command plus in this ID. I hate this ID, to be honest. But yeah, it's worse. OK, anyways, now we should, if when we open up our index, what the freak? <laughs> Module.exports. Wow. OK, Josh is bored. I knew something was going to happen. Sorry about that. So basically, we've connected, it's starting, and now it's open. And that sketch I created, I actually didn't need to create it yet, but I got a little ahead of myself. So now we can listen on that data that the, um, the sketch right here is sending. So it's writing one and then zero. And in here we can say the, pseudoport, the node pseudoport library has a dot on data. That is pretty easy. And we'll say console log data. And we should be getting some buffers. So one, zero, one, zero. Sweet. So the Arduino is writing the data to here, and we're reading it. Awesome. OK. Now, <laughs> I just started my own class. That was awesome. OK. Now let's get back to the presentation again. Level three. OK, so now we're talking about Node Serial Port. And about 80% of Node Serial Port is in C++, if you actually see the GitHub uh, repo. And I won't be showing how to make Node Serial Port. I mean, I haven't been showing how to make each library, because of course they do tons of stuff. Like, they'll be using, yeah, they just do tons of stuff, tons of checking to make sure everything will be work right. But I'm just showing examples. Anyways, and so like I said in our last example, the, we're reading data from the Arduino, but this time, let's write data to the Arduino, and then we'll read data from the, um, the Arduino will read the data that we send to it. And um, let, I, talk, I showed you that we were sending buffers, and we were like, what the heck's a buffer? Well, the right, um, no serial port has a write method. And basically, the write method will be sending um, buffers, and then we can give it a callback. And basically, the buffer parameter accepts this, um, or it accept a buffer object or a type that is accepted by a buffer constructor. An example would be an array of bytes or a string. And um, the buffer is just like, if, if you uh, use Node at all, then you, uh, they have just normal buffers, so I'm not doing anything crazy. And then in our Arduino sketch, we'll turn, on, we'll turn the LED on if a one is red, and then if it, we'll turn the LED off if a zero is red. And then in our blinky.js, we'll just send all the bytes. Woo! Send the bytes, either a zero or one. Found this cool cat picture for demo. No reason, just because. Um, let's gather the windows. Mirror the displays. Awesome. So now we'll go into demo three. And again, we'll be using a note to report because that's the report is awesome. OK, we'll go back, and we'll create, we'll create a blinky.js. And then in here, we'll open it up. And again, we're going to want to get the serial port. So we'll get serial port is equal to require serial port. And then we can say dot serial port. And now let's create the serial port. So serial is equal to new serial, just like we did in the last one. Nothing new here yet. Let's say dev tty.usb modem 14.11. That's right. OK. And then go in here, and we can give it the baud rate again, 9,600. And then we'll just create a value. This could be zero, but I'm going to make it a hex because hexes are awesome and it you know makes me look smart and stuff. So you can just so you can just send a hex to the Arduino and it'll still just be a zero. Like I could just do a zero, but hex is cool. But you will use hexes like for stuff for communicating with the Arduino. But right now there's not really a um, reason why I have to, but I'm going to. 
So then we'll create a function, blink. Basically, we'll just say if value is equal to, then we'll say values, just so I can um, switch it. If else, value is equal to. And then we'll say uh, serial dots, so serials from up here. And then we'll say dot write. Give it a new buffer, so node, you know, we can give it a buffer. And like I said earlier, we'll give it an array, and we'll give it the value. Oops. And then we'll say console.log starting. And then we could say serial.on, serial.on, open function. Uh, we'll say console.log, serial port is open. And then in here, we'll also say set interval, give it the blink, and we'll just say every second. So now we have our blinky.js. And we'll be writing, so instead of reading the data, we're going to be writing to the Arduino. And then the Arduino will read the data and then turn on the LED, depending if it's a 0 or 1. So now we'll have to create that in, our, in a new sketch. And I don't want to type that, so I'm just going to take this out. But again, we'll begin it the, how do I even make this bigger? Like, can you all see that? Is that fine? What? Ah, oh, great. What? That's search, yeah. Look at this. Woo, magic. Nice. I know what I'm doing. All right. <laughs> OK. Oh, my gosh. That was good. OK, we'll create a const outside. And then this will just be our output pin. Or output pin. Oh, my gosh. And this is 13, the one I was on. So, And then our setup, again, we'll just say pin mode. And then we'll give it the output pin. I couldn't, I could have just put 13, but just to, yeah. And then we'll give it the output. This is what I was talking about earlier. You can give it an input, output, input, pull up, et cetera. And then in our loop, we'll say incoming bytes is equal to serial.read. Instead of write, we're reading now. And then we'll say if incoming byte is equal to 1, then we'll digital write, which I um, told you about earlier that you can give it a pin and either high or low to turn on the LED. So we'll give it the pin, and then we'll just say hi. Oh my gosh, now I got to go down. Oh, I could have just moved that up. Oops, I'm smart. And then in our if, we'll say else the incoming byte is equal to then in here. We can just say digital write, output pin, low. So now we are, let me zoom out a little. In our setup, we get the pin, set the pin mode, and then we begin listening on 9600. And if any bytes are coming that are a 1, then turn on the LED. And if it's a 0, then we'll turn off the LED. So it'll, we'll just make it blink. So we'll upload that to the Arduino. And then we'll do blinky.js. Starting to report it's open. And it blinks. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. All right. That was awesome. I'll just leave it blinking for now because it's cool. Um, sweet. OK. Let's stop mirroring for now. And we'll go back to the side. You can see the awesome cat again. OK, now I just want to talk there um, a little bit about this. So Adafruit, they, um, you can buy hardware and stuff from them. And they have tons of libraries out there that just don't have Node.js counterparts, or they don't have anything that you can write JavaScript to. So for instance, like I was saying earlier, my white tiles app, or not app, well, the game that I made with the hardware, I was using NeoPixel. They have a library, NeoPixel. 
and I wanted to use JavaScript, but I didn't know of any counterpart to NeoPixel that I can control um, the lights with with JavaScript, so I wasn't sure. And there's just a ton of, ton of libraries out there that they have that need Node.js counterparts. And so I'm going to start trying and making new libraries that will be Node.js counterparts to them so we can write JavaScript to communicate with the Arduino and use other libraries. And there is one downside, though, I want to say using JavaScript is you have to run Node. And instead of having an Arduino sketch, if you just give the Arduino power, then it'll automatically run. But if you run Node, it, or I mean, if you don't run Node, then you know, of course it won't run. So there's just some downsides, but JavaScript's awesome, so we all want to write JavaScript. And that's my talk. Thanks. Do I have extra time? I'm sure I do. <laughs> I didn't want to take questions because I'm sure you guys are going to ask me tons of crazy questions, but I'll take some. <laughs> Do you have any questions to make me look dumb? <laughs> oh, no, Murphy, be nice. It made me excited interacting with the real world and making a game that I could play with like buttons and show other people. Like I could just transport it anywhere and then just give it power it was awesome feeling. Like and then playing a game, so I definitely got excited. And I still want to make more. And that's what I was saying. I want to make libraries that are counterpart to the Arduino ones, so that I can control, you know, using Node to control like NeoPixels lights that they have or control other stuff that they have. So I got excited for sure. But I don't know if everyone else would. Oh, Ryan? <laughs> so when are you going to make the next Adobe Prom? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Prom is coming up. I don't know what I'm going to make. <laughs> <laughs> that be good. Oh, yeah. I'll let you know. So like I said earlier, I bought an Arduino a long time ago, and then I totally broke it, so I need to flash it again, because I, I don't even know what I was doing. I was just like, you know there's that dog gift that just, what, I don't know what I'm doing. That was basically me with a Raspberry Pi. But I know that the Arduino has tons of libraries, and JavaScript has, you know, they have Johnny5 and stuff. But Raspberry and Pi, I'm not really sure how it compares to Arduino, so I'm sorry. I can't really answer that. But it's awesome. What does FFI mean again? It's like C++, C, yeah, it's like a variation. So. Mm, I don't know, probably. <laughs> I'm not really sure. <laughs> I, that's why I said I haven't made actual like I haven't made transferred Arduino code to JavaScript yet, but that's what I want to do after this conference. So I'm sorry I can't answer you, but yeah. <laughs>